interviews, profiles, and reports. S. M. R. Radio. Sponsored by Westmoreland Flint. I. Q. Communications. Roddy Maker, Sue, and Holness. Dr. Sean Desiree is an international expert in the integration and utilization of mining information technology and automation. As a tenured associate professor at the University of Arizona, he directs research and development programs along with teaching classes. Dr. Desiree, how does one choose the right technology? What I consider to be the technology that would need any sort of corporate strategy or analysis. Some people consider hardware technology, for example, the new, you know, the new Caterpillar truck or the new P&H shovel or some such thing. I think mining companies, mine managers and so forth are well versed at how to implement new technology of that sort. What I'll be discussing here is the new IT and business intelligence technology, the technology that provides new data, information or analytical options. So in terms of real products, this can range anything from the new health monitoring systems to basically uh, fleet management systems where we're tracking equipment throughout the pit or underground operation to try to monitor its performance or other aspects that are necessary for mine engineering and, and continuous improvement. So uh, how does one choose the right type of that this uh, business intelligence technology? The first thing I could say is do not simply focus on the hardware and software. A lot of time is spent on choosing the right vendor, the right technology, and so forth. But really a mediocre technology, business intelligence technology, can make much more of an impact than a fantastic technology that is poorly implemented. So it's really about the implementation planning and process change necessary to make that technology more effective. So often when selling a product, the vendors aren't about to lay out you know, the really challenge aspect of that technology being the process change. They'll show all the possible things you could do with that technology, all the possible business process improvements that could come about. However, without really getting into the really challenging side of changing what people do. And that typically the people at the corporate office who make the decisions on the technology might not have a true understanding of the challenge involved in changing what people do at the mine sites. How can both corporate and local mine personnel contribute to maximizing technology's benefits? What a corporate group could help with is uh, making sure there are certain standards when selecting that technology. The first and, and most important standard is interoperability. There hasn't been a single vendor yet that has a solution for every single mine process. There's been plenty of vendors that have been selling these technologies that, that encompass every single part, continuous improvement, engineering, and tactical management. As with any product, there's no one company that can provide a holistic solution. So one thing that a, a corporate group can do is to ensure that the vendor is interoperable. They have an open schema, meaning the data contained within their system, generated by the system, is not proprietary. If you generate that data, you should own it. Microsoft could never tell you, hey, whatever you write in your Microsoft Word, we own it. It's the same thing for technology vendors. Just because it was generated using your technology doesn't mean you own the actual data. So that's probably the most important thing that a corporate group could do. The second most important uh, aspect is to, to make sure that there's enough in the budget in the implementation for education. Mining engineers today, they have a particular formatted education to emphasize rock engineering or uh, geotechnical issues, things that you know, make a mining engineer unique. However, if you ask any ordinary mining engineer how much of their day is spent analyzing data, collecting data, managing data, probably most of their work day is spent interacting with data, not on rock mechanics. And yet, none of their education stipulates that they have to take any sort of mining database class. Therefore, a lot of that has to happen on the job where they have to learn how to use database tools and analysis tools. Another trap that I see very often is, is the purchase of these web-based reporting tools. Now, I want to emphasize this. Reporting tools are not the same as analytical tools. A lot of these web reporting tools, what engineers at the site end up doing is copying the data in the online report and creating a new data source in an Excel sheet that they can manage themselves. Therefore, I strongly emphasize the use of analytical software 
in particular the Excel that can connect to any sort of database, rather than these online web interface tools that connect to databases. Because let's face it, the users are going to put it into Excel anyhow. You might as well provide it to them in Excel. So it's not a matter of only choosing the right technology. It's choosing the right technology where you could have analytical tools built in, where you would be able to provide education to those users on how to access that data. But don't only rely on the vendor tools to provide the information. And finally, how can industry partner with academic institutions or vendors to achieve important innovations? There's a lot of collaborative relationships for research and development uh, happening right now uh, around the world. There's several groups, I uh, probably don't need to name them, but uh, there's several groups that uh, partner academic institutions and industry to create products. Now, in mining, we simply don't have the resources to create new science, to fund research in these, you know, these very blue sky concepts. Perhaps um, metallurgy or uh, hydrometallurgy or mineral processing might be a little different, where they can work on fundamental issues of chemistry. But in true mining sense, there's very little science left where we should invest in highly theoretical aspects. So I would say that it's probably worth more bang for the buck for mining companies when investing in mining research and development to partner with institutions that have the resources and history to productize their research. So when you fund a particular research project, it should have some sort of commercialization or at least pre-commercialization plan to bring whatever research is done into being a product. Now, obviously, a vendor, that, that person, I mean, that's their primary goal. Any sort of research that they do, they immediately want to see a product. The last thing is, uh, is that of intellectual property. Now, some mining companies, they want to capture that intellectual property related to a particular technology. But a mining company's expertise really lies in finding mineral deposits and exploiting them, as well as safety and sustainable development. I don't think a mining company would really want to begin servicing new products. So I would suggest that a lot of my experience in, in writing grants and agreements with companies, don't bother locking up a lot of the IP. You can have an exclusivity, so for example, if it's in partnership with a, a copper company, the technology shouldn't be sold to another copper technology for anywhere from one to three years after the research is over. And why that is, because it gives them some time to really understand the technology, implement it, and so forth. So they do get a leg up in the competition. But it's really not a mining company's responsibility to evolve that product, provide service to the customer, and so forth. That's not their area of expertise. That would be more on the vendor side, where they have the experience to service customer needs. And another thing is that when you implement your technology, for example, in, in one copper operation, and a few years later when you're allowed, you can implement it in another copper operation, you might learn new things about that technology and adapt it to make it an even better product. So the company that had originally implemented the project might be able to quickly adapt to that new concept, take advantage of any development that happens within their competitors because they already have the technology deeply ingrained in their business processes. Interviews, profiles, and reports. S. M. R. Radio. Sponsored by Westmoreland Flint. I. Q. Communications. Roddy Maker. Sue. And Holness.